call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sutherland Select Board. The time is 6.33 p.m. Our first order of business is going to be approve the minutes from November 6th, our last meeting. I have a motion we approve the minutes from November 6th. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. All righty, our first order of business will be to uh, appoint our new resource administrator. Thank you for joining us, Maureen. Um, Jeff, do you have anything you want to say before we... I think, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so um, we interviewed Maureen. I I'm on a meeting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We'll talk to Dad. Ooh. Oh, my um, uh, I think we interviewed Maureen two or three weeks ago. Um, very uh, convinced that, that she can do the job no problem. Um, Cindy and Heather and I were in the interviews. Um, has great experience. We have no concerns. Um, seems like it would be a, a wonderful, friendly face for residents and others um, as they enter the building. And we're confident Maureen can help us um, with the, the particular tasks we're looking for. So Maureen, I don't know if you wanted to say anything else. Um, you don't have to. I just wanted to give the opportunity for the select board to, to meet you. I don't know that our microphone's working either. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is going well. Well. Um, speaker. Hello? Hello? <laughs> so I think it's working. Hey. Hello, this is, oh. this is Maureen. Yep. Hey, Maureen. I'm sorry. We were, we're having a lot of technical difficulties today. Um, <coughs> I just did a, a brief intro and said that we're confident that you're going to have no problem um, doing the tasks and would be a, a very friendly person for residents and others visiting to, to see. Um, so I didn't know if you wanted to just say hi. This is just an opportunity to introduce yourself to the select board. Um, okay, if you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is Maureen Nichols. I'm from Wheatley. I just finished um, two terms on the Wheatley School Committee and I'm not looking for jobs. So I was talking to some other people from there and thought I would be a good fit. I love talking to people actually when I can talk. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to starting. I hope. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. We can, yeah. Hello. Oh, we lost audio. Okay. She can't hear us. Hello? Yeah. Uh, this is not. No. Hi there. Sorry about that. No, that we, we can hear you. We're just having trouble on our end. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. What we'll do is we will make a plan to <laughs> do a more uh, thorough meet and greet at some point when we're not having all these technical difficulties and when you're feeling a little better. Um, we're very excited about having you on board. We think you're going to be a great fit. Um, you know, Jeff said great things about the interviews and the process, so I'm very happy with that. Um, does, the does the board have any questions before we oh, move to the point? Look forward to meeting you. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, at this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint uh, Maureen to the position of resource administrator. Beginning uh, uh, as early as November 20th. Beginning as early as November 20th. All right. I motion we appoint Maureen Nichols to the position of resource administrator starting as early as November 20th. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three nothing. Thank you very much, Maureen. We look forward to meeting you with slightly less <laughs> technical difficulties at some point in the near future. Thank you. Feel better, Maureen. Yeah. Maureen. Take care, Thank Maureen. You. I'm going to take a step off the meeting now. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't want to do that. All righty. So all technical issues aside, um, let's move on to the budget memo. Take yeah. it away. 
So every year we send out a <coughs> memo from the select board to uh, departments, <coughs> boards, and committees with sort of general instructions on the expectations for next year's budget. So um, this year I am recommending that we start with the level services budget. Last year we had level services and expanded services. Um, we do not expect to have quite the, the same surplus that we had last year. Um, so we'll start with level services, see what where things are coming in, and it, if we can do more, we can go back to the departments. I'll, I'm sure they'll be able to come up with more yeah. ways to spend money if we have it. I mean, we did pick away quite a bit last year at the expanded, right? Yeah, yep, absolutely. We, um, yeah, there, there were, a, a, few things I think the the library's expanded services w was a priority I think the schools got um, the additional employee um, but I think that in general there were there weren't a whole lot of requests either I mean it, it, they were all fairly reasonable um, most of them were increased hours related for employees mm -hmm. so. so does it make sense to ask for both up front so that we don't have to go back to them if we do end up finding ourselves in a position to be able to expand some services then we just have know what's in front of us. We also can know what what the delta is going to look like if if we do end up having to expand it more. You know, let's say we have an extra hundred thousand dollars, and we only have twenty thousand dollars worth of requests from people. Then we know we can do that without it being a problem. If we have twenty thousand dollars and we know we have five hundred thousand dollars worth of expanded requests, then we're knowing we're just in a different position. Yeah. Um. I mean, I will certainly defer to you on this because you know what you're talking about a lot more than I do, but. If, if, it's, if it's better for the department to just ask for level and then go to expanded, that's fine. Maybe, maybe something in the middle where a level services budget plus an, like a written description of one or two priorities mm -hmm. that if there were additional, and then that way we have some idea to work from and some budget idea. Is that, or would you prefer, I mean, I, I can ask for either. What do Crystal and Dan, what do you think? Well, I guess my biggest, what's the reality of actually being able to go beyond level services, knowing what we know about the increases to health care and things like that? Is it, you know, we don't want to waste people's time drafting up two budgets when we know there's some going to be some significant increases right already yeah yep I, I I think that it's probably going to be a level services budget I think it is probably where we're going to wind up um, and again for people watching at home that doesn't mean you know level funding we're trying to maintain the level of services we will increase funding as, as needed to meet those that level of service yeah maybe you could give them one item <laughs> yeah. one wish list item <laughs> Um, I mean, it, it sounds like you're thinking it's most likely going to be a level versus, yeah. so I, I'm happy to defer you on that and just go with the, give us a level budget. And if, hey, ma magically we come back with free cash being a lot higher than we thought it was, or something else changes, or what we get back for level services doesn't I account for much of an increase in terms of actual budget, then we can have another discussion. Um, but I can certainly see the wisdom in not wasting their time having them prepare all that and then turn around and be like, ha just kidding. Um, so yeah, um, is the board comfortable having us just do level for now? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, please go ahead and have them give us a level services um, budget and then we can obviously adjust as needed. And then um, are you okay, the, the date uh, operating budget would be due January 11th and then capital budget um, just before Christmas, December 21st. Does that seem like a reasonable? That was similar to last year, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I think it was a little bit earlier in December last year. Okay. Um, that's fine with me. We haven't even planned our first capital um, committee meeting yet, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that works for me. And then that will help us inform when we want to plan our first capital planning committee also. Do you need any votes on that, or did you just need to get our... Yeah, if you want to vote to tell me to send it out as presented. Sure. I would, at this time, I would entertain a motion to have Jeff send out the budget memo as presented. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Three nothing. Thank 
Thank you. Alrighty, and then the last bit of new business is going to be the vote on the two and a half percent increases to the capital stabilization override. Um, is there any reason you wouldn't do that? I know we have a. Is, yes. Of um, I mean, so I'll start by saying that since I've gotten here, and I believe since the capital stabilization. Um, fund was formed, it has been increased 2.5% every year. That being said, originally it was $100,000, and when it was created, they knew that $100,000 wasn't enough. Last year, you all added 275000 so there may be a reason in that, hey, let's see if this is enough for right now. Let's not increase it 2.5%. Um, that being said, I think that the discussion about the 275 was we don't think this is enough. Yeah. Um, so that would argue it, you know, for increasing it. So from my perspective, being on that committee, we were looking for a number that we thought would get through and cover enough of what we needed to be able to be a, a meaningful increase and get most of the big stuff done. But there was, we could have gone 600,000 in, instead of 275,000 and mm -hmm. still come up short in the next 10 years because we have the, the school roof coming up. We've got a whole bunch of big projects coming up. Um, so my my feeling on that would be, you know, two and a half percent is not even keeping up with inflation at this point. Um, I, I consider that to be just sort of a almost a given for things like this. Um, but I'm happy to hear other opinions. I, well, I think the two and a half percent makes sense. To just keep it going and have the money there for us and like you say there wasn't you could have asked for more and there's certainly a, lot, a big need for it yeah. in your capital projects that, that'd be my my thought and also just for context i am very confident that this will be another year where we see a negative overall tax rate a decrease in over in you know per hundred thousand tax rate in town because property values are still going up um against the two and a half percent that we're going to potentially increase it Crystal, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, I'm good with doing the two and a half percent um, this year. I, I do think we have to keep an open mind next year, um, you know, because again, this is the first year with that 275. Um, but yeah, for this year, I'm okay with with the override. Okay. Um, all right. Well, then, in that case, at this time, I would entertain a motion to vote to approve a 2.5% increase to the capital stabilization override. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. And just for folks watching at home, that would mean uh, $409,883 um, would be the 2.5% increase from the 275 plus the 124886 So about an 8000 ish increase over last year or something like that? Uh, about 10000 About 10000 okay. Yeah. All right. So probably a very small amount per actual tax bill in the end. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, moving on to old business. First up, we have select board updates. Uh, I don't have anything big. Just want to say, uh, hope everyone had a great Veterans Day weekend and are looking forward to a wonderful Thanksgiving. Crystal, do you have anything for us? Um, no, I'm, I'm good. I guess I can mention you, the UMass, yeah. We had a second meeting with UMass. Um, actually, the DPW came, the Town engineer Jason Skeels and the DPW superintendent were both there, UMass staff. And we basically were talking about the southern section uh, going through the western end of uh, UMass, but uh, a couple of ideas came up. Um, DPW had looked at this before, and one of the, one of the ideas was there's a, uh, down behind the treatment plant, there's an old pipes, a couple of pipes that went over, and there's an old abutments there, and the old pipes are there, so that's one other path. That it comes across to near the highway, um, and you could run up along the highway, but the problem is you got to get back over the, the Mill River again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we talked some more about that. We talked about uh, the electric easement, some of the concerns apartment complexes had back in the past. We kind of detailed that the path, 
Looks like it would only cross Puffton and Brandywine, and then out in electric easement to the to the intersection of Meadow and 116. So the first step we're taking is to reach out to the uh, Deborah source and to see what they think about allowing a shared use path on to at least crossing through their, their utility easement. And then from there, we'll, we'll, if we get the okay there, we'd go to the apartment complexes and talk to them to see what, if they're supportive. Good. And then and then as a collective group, maybe then reach out to uh, MassDOT. Okay. And for the apartment complexes, I mean, they can also use that as an amenity of, for of their course. apartment complex going forward is, you know, immediate access to, you know, long bike trails. So. Yeah. You know, depending on how they how they decide to, you know, swing that, they may be excited about the prospect of, of having sure. that be a thing. Yeah, we're hopeful. Yeah. So all that's happening on the Amherst side. Yeah. What's happening on the Sunderland side? Really, it's all once we get through this bottom piece, then yeah. then it's time to talk to Mass. Then it's, okay. Yeah, I mean, we still we could talk to them about this the, the northern piece, but we haven't. We just figured we'd get through this yeah. first. No, I got it. And, and there's not really a whole lot of point of doing all that uh, rest of that stuff if it dies in Amherst, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I yeah. just didn't know if we've looked to see if there were any just major oh hurdles for we, Sunderland. I don't think so, but again, yeah, I'll, I'll wait to hear. D DOT will wane at some point. Yeah, yeah we'll find out. I know there's a we talked about Hubbard. What's the name of the Hubbard Hill? Hubbard Hill Road. Well, there's there's definitely some places where the culverts narrow up a little bit. So if there's a couple yeah. of those on 116. We'll have to look more closely at. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your work on that. We really appreciate it. Um, Jeff, do you have anything for us for Town Administrative Updates? Uh, yep, just two things happening this week. Tomorrow, uh, the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight and some seniors are going to tour a potential location at 23 Plumtree, um, which is for sale and might be for use as a senior center. Uh, that's happening tomorrow at 12.30. And then Wednesday um, at 6.30, we're having the kickoff meeting for the Village Center Visioning with Stantac. And um, we've invited the Planning Board, the Zoning Board of Appeals, Historical Commission. Um, so it's, uh, they'll be in town throughout the day meeting with local businesses and other stakeholders, property owners. And then the evening is to talk to um, town boards and committees about their ideas. Will that be here? Yep, that'll be here at 630, um, working on potentially getting a Zoom. And again, it's the kickoff meeting, so they're going to be coming back again with some ideas and getting public feedback of their ideas later. So um, that is the more important meeting if you're trying to debate. And if two or more of us show, we need to call a meeting. So I have posted it as a joint meeting of the Select okay. Board, Planning Board, ZBA, and Historical Commission. So yeah. uh, that's all I have. All right. Um, last up, just some important dates. Um, you just mentioned the village kickoff. Uh, just a reminder that the town offices will be closed on Thanksgiving, November 23rd. Not that anyone was going to be surprised by that, but just making sure everyone knows. Um, our next meeting will be uh, next Monday, November 20th, at our normal 6.30 time. Uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so moved. Uh, I see. <laughs> all right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, 3 nothing. Take us out at 6.40. There's a short one.